Uh, speaking of targeting, we were targeting Montreal at that number three spot to see what they did and where they kind of took took this round one. We said they had three options. Take the best player available at the time, take the best player suited for what they need, or potentially trade back and see what happens with a player type movement. What they did, take the best player suited for their needs. Centerman, Jesperi, Katka, Niemi at number three overall. You can see a trend here from the Habs over the last three years when it comes to D-men and centermen. 17 of their 19 picks have either come on the blue line or down the middle. Panger, I'm going to you down the middle because you were spot on going out on a limb there in our final couple of minutes of the pre-draft show saying, I think Montreal is going to go for their need here down the middle. What do you think of it? Well, they stuck with it, and, and, I, and I believe they stuck with it because they believed uh, that he progressed as the year went on. We talked about it in the pregame show. Uh, his, uh, his ranking wasn't uh, this early, early on. There was some talk about his skating ability. There was talk about his balance. He was hunched over a little bit. Could he get around the ice? Well, he certainly improved as the season went on. Uh, many teams out there had him very, very high. Maybe not third overall, but at the end of it, it doesn't matter where, where you might have him. You, you you like the player, you follow the player, you feel like you can project that player uh, with the young group of players that the Montreal Can Canadiens want to build on. They need more center icemen. They need, they need more skill. There's a lot of areas that the Montreal Canadiens need to improve on, uh, but certainly uh, Kotkaniemi, I mean, it, it's going to be interesting to see how he turns out versus the players behind him. I mean, if Brady Kachuk turns out to be this wonderful, powerful two-way player uh, and, and ends up having this brilliant career, you're always going to look back and question. But that's the easy part of the game. I think, I think having the uh, having the the guts to step up and say, you know what, that is our guy. It is Montreal. The heavy pressure there. Everybody's analyzing who the Montreal Canadiens are going to take. Mark Bergevin's under the gun. Timmins is under. Everybody's under pressure there in Montreal. And here they are. They said, you know what, this is our guy, and we're taking this guy. And pressure to turn it around quickly. How how quickly does this alleviate that situation, that depth down the middle problem in Montreal, Dave Reed? Uh, I don't think it alleviates it at all. I, right. I still think that they're very short down the middle. Yeah. I mean, yes, I like Jesper Kuck and Yemi, no question about it. I think this young man is going to be a good National Hockey League player. I'm not sure the ceiling is a number one center. I think it's definitely a number two center. Number one centers usually get a little more upside on the scoring. Kuck and is a very smart player, distributor. He's not necessarily the scorer, but I think it's going to be difficult to put him into the lineup. He has played in the league in Finland, the top league. He has played against men. He's also played for his father, who was coaching yep. the team. So that, that might have helped a little bit in insulating him a bit. But I don't think this alleviates the problem. I don't think there was a player in this draft who would have alleviated the problem at center ice right now for the Montreal Canadiens. I think in a few years, we'll see the benefits of Kakaniemi coming in. I think everybody had him in around that 10 range. That's why I was a little surprised yep. to see him jump yep. up to that three because some dynamic goal scorers were left on the board after Kakaniemi was taken.